Hi there, my name is Etra with Mind Studios, and this is part two of our tutorial series all about making your own game in Universal Fighting Engine. If you haven't seen the overview video in the top right, I highly recommend you watch that to learn about how to follow along with this series. Today we're going to take the UFE template and add in our own custom 2.5D characters with proper rigging and damage hitboxes. By the end of this video, we'll set up three clone characters that use the demo fighter movesets. In the next video, we'll talk about how to make custom movesets. If you want to make sprite-based characters, we have a separate tutorial for that, we'll link at the end here. But in this video, we'll focus on 3D models that you set up to fight in a 2D or 3D space. Now if you've never done anything with 3D character creation or 3D modeling before, don't worry, you can still follow this tutorial. However, if you are planning on making any sort of full game in UFE, 2D, or 3D, I highly recommend you know the basics of 3D modeling and how Unity interacts with materials, animations, rigs, and UVs. So I made a playlist of recommended videos in the top right to start you out if you're new to this. But again, regardless of your previous experience, you should be able to follow along and learn how to take any FBX model from Blender and Mixamo and get it working in UFE. So to start with, we'll download a 3D model from Mixamo. If you haven't heard of Mixamo before, it's a web-based software from Adobe that provides free 3D models and animations, as well as an auto-rigging tool that we'll revisit later. For now, all I'm going to do is log into my Adobe account and find a character I want. And then instead of just downloading the character, I'm actually going to find a good idle animation where I can clearly see the character's arms and legs from the side. We're going to tell Mixamo to give us this character in FBX format with skin at 60 frames per second and no keyframe reduction. We're just going to download this one animation for now, and we'll come back to Mixamo when we start making custom moves and attacks for our character. Now that we have our FBX file, we need to import the right parts of it in the right sections of UFE. In UFE, different aspects about characters go in three different places. First, we put our model, UI, and animations in shared assets. Next, we put our fighter prefab in resources. Then, we put our custom character file in the character folder. Let's go over each of those sections. First, we're going to go to UFE, Demos, Shared Assets, Characters, and make a folder for our new character, Ybot. Let's take a look at Robot Kyle and see what this folder should look like. As you can see here, the Shared Resources folder holds all of Robot Kyle's animations, his model, and his character portraits. Let's hop on over to Ybot and set up folders in the same way. Let's start with the model. All we have to do here is drag our character model from Mixamo into here. From here, we want to go click the model and make sure to go to Rig, select Humanoid, and click Apply. This is a very important step to have your model share animations between fighters and work well in UFE in general. If your model is having trouble at this part, it probably means your model doesn't have a rig. But don't worry, I'll explain how to fix that issue later with another character. But for now, we have our model fully imported, and we want to snatch a copy of its animation here by grabbing this, pressing Ctrl D, and then bringing this over into its animation folder and let's actually give it its right name. That means for this section, the only thing we have left is the character portraits. To make some for your model, we can actually just hop over to Robot Kyle and then put his in a folder here. You can just use Robot Kyle's character portraits if you want to, but I recommend first dropping your character into the scene view like this, which is what you're gonna have to do anyway here and taking wonderful photo shots of it. Let's make sure it's zeroed out. We can hover over, press F to get to it, and then let's disable the lighting and the grid here for a better view. Just pull out your snipping tool or screenshot at this point 
And if you want to get really fancy, you can slowly follow my steps here regarding what I do with the free GIMP image editing software to get a nice character portrait and icon for your fighter. Once you're done, drag these files into your UI folder, then make sure they're both imported as sprites, and their names are Portrayal Big and Portrayal Small. For the next part, go back to Demos, Resources, 2D Fighter, and Characters, and here is where we're going to save our prefab. So what we can do is we can grab our Ybot, then drag it down to this bottom folder here, and click Original Prefab. The prefab is basically your character saved as a game object that UFE is going to load and unload. And now that we have a copy of it saved to this folder, we can delete our character from the scene here. We're not done yet because we've got to add two things to this prefab. I'm going to double click to open it up. Now the only thing we want to change with our animator here is setting the controller to Mechanum Controller or MC Controller. Next, you're going to specifically want to click Add Component here and click the Hitboxes script. We'll edit the values of this script through something called the character file, so there's no need to set any of these parameters manually. And about the character file, this is our last step. Close your prefab, head on over to UFE, Demos, 2D Fighter, Characters, and let's make a folder for our Ybot. In here, we'll add one file, the character file. So right click, go to create, UFE, character file. I'm going to drag it to the top here, move this down. And we're going to hop into here, give this a proper name of Ybot, and give our character the proper name of Ybot. The character file is where we store all the data regarding the character's general info, the prefab to load, its hitbox setup, how we specifically want it to move, having head tracking enabled, custom controls for just the character, stuff related to its gauge, setting up its moveset, and what it should do when it's an AI. For this tutorial, we're just going to focus on general info, which prefab to load, and hitboxes. We'll get into everything else later. So to start with, let's go to general info, enter the character's name, set up the character portraits here. You can fill in this miscellaneous data here as well, but the most important parts to change are the character's default life points and their max super gauge. In this next section, UFE wants to know what prefab to load for this character. So, let's head on over to UFE, Demos, Resources, 2D Fighter, and see where we saved our prefab, and just drag them in. With the prefab loaded, we can actually open the prefab in a special way that helps us set up the hitboxes. We can click Open Character here, and we see we've got a bit of a conflict with the scene view and the character view. So I'm actually going to rearrange these windows a bit in a way that helps with hitbox setup, and in general, other UFE project setup. Once you're done arranging your windows, you can go to Window, Layouts, Save Layout, and I'll call this UFE Editing. Another thing you want to do is go to Gizmos, make sure they're on, and turn off 3D icons so Gizmos always appear on top like a UI layer. And then you can turn lighting on or off, but I recommend you keep your grid on here. Then let's scroll down here, close character if it's open, and try opening it up again. And we've got it in a nice, better view. Let's click Reset Scene View. And then the first thing we want to do is make sure our position is zeroed out, which is good. Then we want to make sure our character's facing right before we set up their hitboxes. That's good. And as for scale here, we don't necessarily know how big our character should be. So let's go over here and open up another character file. Let's say Robot Kyle. And let's close this character, open up Robot Kyle, and we see he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks tall. So let's keep that in mind and open up our Ybot, close this character, open this up. Let's try 4x4x4, four by four by four. see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and as you'll notice, our rotation wasn't saved, and that's one common thing in the character files here, 
is there's some sections where you do have to click apply changes to save your changes. So we'll set its rotation 90, scale is good here, and I'll make sure to click apply changes. Now we can set up our hitboxes so our character actually interacts with the world. So I can open that up here, set a new hitbox, and then we need to choose a specific body part. I'll start with the head, and we've got to link it to a specific bone here. So I'm going to look for head bone, and that way this hitbox is going to move with the animations that move that head. You can add either circle or square colliders throughout the character here. I'll swap between them both to show them both off. And we kind of want to give this its good size here and maybe offset it just a bit so we're closer to the head. We're going to skip collision type for now and head on over to hitbox type. Hitbox type defines for the opponent whether hitting this area of their enemy counts as a high hit or a low hit. Since this is a head, I'm going to make it count as a high hit. Finally, we have to decide what our hitbox's collision type is. We have six different collision types for our character hitboxes in UFE, and most characters will use these first four. The first type here is called the body collider, and it's represented as yellow. Body colliders react to any kind of collisions and cannot overlap with each other. In other words, if an opponent starts walking right up to your character, the characters will be pushed back at these points. These colliders also act as hurt boxes and can receive damage when another player hits them. For UFE characters, we usually place body colliders at the head and the upper and lower body of a character. So go ahead and place those. The next type of collider we have is hit colliders. These hit colliders are represented in green and can overlap other opponents' hit colliders. Just like the body colliders, these colliders act as hurt boxes and can receive damage when hit by another player. We usually place these hit colliders on the arms, legs, and feet of UFE characters, so I'll just add them here. Our next type of collider is the No Collider. This is represented in white. This type of collider can overlap and deal damage to another player. However, unlike the other colliders, it does not receive damage. We usually put these colliders exclusively on the hands of characters. This means that if an enemy hits your character's hands and no other colliders, no damage will be dealt. However, you can still send damage. <clears throat> However, you can still send damage to another character with these colliders. I'll add them here. Finally, the last hitbox is simple. It's called the throw collider and it's represented in pink. Basically, if an opponent's throw hits this box, your character will be thrown. All you have to do here is add a square here attached to some body joint, and ta-da! Now, make sure at the end of this, you hit Apply Changes, because these hitboxes will not autosave. After quite a bit of effort, your hitboxes should be all set up. However, in a bit, I'll show you how you can set up all your hitboxes in just one minute so stay tuned for that. For now, let's finally get our character in the game. So we're just going to go down here to move sets, create new stance entry, and then steal Mechanim Bot's move set here. Let's see, load stance file to make sure everything's good. We'll get back to that in the next part. And then up here, we need to make sure we're Mechanim 3D in the animations run off that avatar we made in the very beginning. So if we type in YBot, there's our YBot avatar, and this should be good. Now for the next part, we want to set AI instructions, and there's a bunch of different AI behaviors you can choose from. I'm going to choose, I think, mix up aggressive here. Make sure it's 2D if you're in the 2D fighter mode, 3D if you're in the 3D fighter mode. So I'm going to select 2D, mix up aggressive. With that done, I'm going to return to the default editor view here. Then we need to go over to the heart and soul of our project. If you remember, that is our global settings. So we can click here, pop this open, and we can find a setting for characters. All we need to do is new character and move on over to our YBot and just drag them in. And then our YBot should be functional in every single mode. 
Now that we know the standard way of adding a character, I'm going to give you two examples where we can use Mixamo to speed up the character creation process, even if our character isn't from Mixamo. The first character I'm going to grab is Jamo. This character was created by Andre from the wonderful YouTube channel Mix and Jam, and I thought it would be a good example to show how differently shaped characters can still use the same fighter animations and movesets as others. I'll import Jamo's package, drag him in a better character folder, I'll make sure he has a humanoid rig, I'm gonna take his default animation and place it over here, and take lovely photos of him for character portraits. We'll save this model as a prefab and add on the animator and hitbox script. We make him a character file, put in the default data and scale. Then finally, here at hitboxes is where we can speed things up. We can of course add Jamo's hitboxes normally, but because he was made in Mixamo, we can actually click this auto setup for Mixamo auto rigger button. And bam, most of the work is done for us. There's gotta be some adjustment here because like his head is obviously not that small. I make sure to press the apply changes button to save these changes. Next, I'll have Jamo steal Ethan's animations and move set. Then I'll drag him into the character slot of the global editor. And ta-da, we have yet another character. Now finally, I want to add a more challenging character. This character, Shrigma, was provided by game dev YouTuber Bargy for this tutorial. This mushroom man is from his game Mushy. But if I add this character into Unity, we have a few issues. The character is flopped on its face, it's not textured, and it doesn't have a rig. But all that is okay, because we can still quickly add this character to UFE. All we have to do is go back to Mixamo and have the website automatically rotate and rig this character for us. Then, once that's done, let's find a good idle animation where we can clearly see his legs and arms separately. We can download this, drag Shrigma in, then we can just repeat the steps from before. Set the humanoid rig, grab the animation, do a photo shoot, make the prefab. When we are at the prefab step, here's where we can add his textures if they don't get automatically added. Make the character. Since this was rigged with Mixamo, we can just click the auto hitboxes button again, borrow a moveset, add him to the roster, and he's not here. This is because there is literally not a space for him on the character select menu. We can fix this pretty easily by going to our GUI options and opening the character select screen. We'll get more into GUI editing later, but all you have to do here if you run out of character slots is open up the prefab, make another character slot, and adjust the amount of characters that exist here in the character select screen script. And just like that, we have three characters added. However, right now they are just clones of other characters that are already in the game. Next episode, we'll get into how you can create your own custom moves and movesets. I'll see you then. Bye.